the Finn LMG just hit the streets. All you got to do is get seven melee kills with an LMG in seven different matches. And voila, you do unlock this weapon. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the stats of this weapon, the time to kill, the damage ranges, and how it compares to the Bruin, which is the current meta in the game before this LMG dropped. No matter how many nerfs the Bruin got, people just cannot stay away from the Bruin, man. So we'll see how this new LMG matches up against the Bruin. And we're also going to be taking a look at the recoil patterns of this LMG because we want to know, is this LMG easy to control? And of course, I am going to be providing some best class setups that you should be using in both multiplayer and in Warzone. So if you guys like today's video, make sure to drop a like, support the channel, and subscribe. If you are new around here, turn on notifications and let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to be using this website called TrueGameData.com. I've featured this website so many times before. Basically, this website was created by an engineer who tested every single attachment and every weapon at about 240 frames per second. So long story short, you're going to get the most accurate results as possible when it comes to weapon stats and their information. Here we have the Bruin MK9, the Finn LMG, and the Finn LMG Factory Adverse. Now, the Adverse is a special attachment that literally changes the performance of the weapon, and you're going to see that here in a little bit. So I'm comparing it to the Bruin because right now, people love using the Bruin. You still see it out there, even if it's got a couple nerfs. But take a look at the ADS here. ADS, Bruin is a lot slower than the Finn LMG. Keep in mind, these are also with no attachments. Sprint to fire time, still going to be the same thing. Tactical sprint to fire time, same thing. Movement speed. Movement speed is much faster on the Finn LMG on both variations. ADS movement speed is going to be a lot faster as well on the Finn LMG. And hip fire area. So if you want to hip fire your weapon for any reason, you're going to have a better hip fire spread with the Finn LMG versus the Bruin. Now the bullet velocity is going to be the same thing for the Bruin and the base Finn LMG. Now the Finn LMG with the factory adverse, it has less bullet velocity. So that's the only con to it. However, that should not turn you off at all. And I'm going to show you guys later in a little bit why. And the reload time is a lot slower on the Finn LMG factory at 5.83 seconds versus the Bruin at 5.27 seconds. Of course, we could always add sleight of hand if that is what you're going after. All right, so let's take a look at the damage profiles here. So for the Finn LMG base weapon stats, it's a 36 to the head, 36 to the chest, 28 to the stomach, and 28 to the extremities. And the fire rate is at 630 RPM. Now the fire rate on the Bruin is a different story at 752 RPM, 46 to the head. So you want to get those headshots with the Bruin. 31 to the chest 31 to the stomach and 31 to the extremities so uh, it's not really that great if you shoot to the body but however the head does give you the best results on the Bruin now the fire rate on the adverse base weapon is going to be 996 rpm but the downside is the damage profiles do go down just a little bit. Now, if you take a look at here, 28 to the head versus 36, 28 to the chest versus 36, 22 to the stomach versus 28, 22 to the extremities versus 28. Let's not let these things turn us off from using the adverse because here is exactly what I'm talking about. So first, we're going to take a look at multiplayer and then we're going to take a look at Warzone. So if you take a look at multiplayer, I'm also adding the percentage of ADS time so we can get as much accurate results as possible, as well as that bullet time travel to the target all right so if you take a look at the headshot location the Bruin is clearly outmatched by the Finn LMG no matter what variation you use in the Finn there is no question at all the Bruin just does not compete when you're shooting to the head in multiplayer at pretty much any range now if you take a look at the adverse barrel the adverse barrel does give you an extra 40 meters versus the base weapon at 30 meters so you get an extra 10 meters out of it if you use the adverse barrel and also it's fairly competitive so it really is going to depend on your taste but if you take a look at over here for the Finn LMG when you're past that 30 meter range the time to kill drastically goes up and it becomes less effective versus the Bruin so let's take a look at the body shots here now for the chest, dude, the Bruin is not competitive at all. So you could cancel that out of the equation for multiplayer. If you're going to choose something for multiplayer, definitely go with the Finn LMG. And the same story here applies where the factory adverse does give you a bit of a boost in that range and also a faster time to kill. And moving down along here to the stomach, Bruin still not as effective. And here you can see that the factory adverse is still consistent with its results with the lowest time to kill. You can definitely conclude already from this information that the adverse barrel is what you want to go for and it doesn't even matter what part of the body that you're going to be hitting so let's go ahead and change this to war zone 
because I'm sure this is what everyone wants to know. Uh, all right, so I'll start off with the head. So this is very interesting. Remember how the Bruin has a much higher damage profile versus the Finn LMG? And this is exactly why. It has a lower time to kill as a result if you're shooting to the head and even all throughout at longer ranges. So if you're gonna use the Bruin, you have to be very specific with where you hit. If you're gonna be competing against players with the Finn LMG, you must shoot to the head. So that's where the Finn LMG has a weakness. The headshots are definitely a weak spot in Warzone. Now, if you take a look at the shots to the chest, it completely flips. The Bruin is now the worst weapon, and most of your engagements are going to be past this 50 plus meter range, especially since we're using an LMG. We are going to want to engage in those long range combat. So if you take a look here at the adverse, the adverse still has the best time to kill to the chest. And here it's a little different. If you're going to shoot to the stomach, it's got the best time to kill up to that 40 meter range. And then past that, the Bruin has a small pocket here of range up to 56 meters where it does take over as the best LMG for that time to kill. And then again, the fin does start to take over once again so uh, we're gonna take a look at the legs here and the same story applies so I'm really more focused on anything beyond 60 meters here because that's how you should use an LMG your close range engagements should be taken care of by an mp5 an Uzi or some kind of assault rifle of your choice but yeah long story short the fin LMG based on this data given here and where you need to shoot it's gonna be a very great LMG that a lot of people are gonna want to use and I definitely do give it a thumbs up all right so here we have the base fin LMG G recoil pattern as you can see it literally goes straight up so it's got a vertical recoil to it and very minimal side to side bounce so I really like that already and here's what it looks like when you try to control that recoil keep in mind this is without any attachments at all now the second recoil pattern is still the fin LMG but this is with my preferred class setup for both multiplayer and in warzone because we do have that long shot adverse barrel which completely changes the weapons fire rate and it also does decrease that recoil control but as you can see here it really has no effect it's still a straight up shot sure the shots do break up here a little bit but we're mostly concerned about the first few shots obviously because you know no one's really going to shoot straight up to the wall like that on an enemy in a real life situation now as you can see here when we do try to control that recoil it's still fairly similar to the first recoil pattern now for the third recoil pattern this is the bruin as you can see here for the bruin it goes straight up and it starts to veer up and to the left now this is what it looks like when you try to control that recoil and this is without any attachments by the way and the recoil when you try to control it is still not that that bad but of course the Bruin does have a much tighter bullet spread when you're trying to control that recoil but for the most part you shouldn't have any issues at all the user friendliness of the fin itself definitely is fairly manageable especially when the recoil just goes straight up like that let me know what you guys think of this all right so next we're going to be taking a look at my best class setups for the fin LMG for both multiplayer and warzone we're gonna start off with multiplayer here so for the muzzle I'm gonna be running with the monolithic suppressor this is gonna add about 10% to damage range also it's gonna give us that sound suppression to help us stay as stealthy as possible then for the barrel we're going to be using the xrk long shot adverse so this one's going to give us that damage range bullet velocity and fire rate so this is what is going to completely transform the weapon it's going to give us a faster time to kill also it does give us the most amount of damage range possible all right so for the laser i'm going to be running with attack laser a multiplayer we need the fastest ads as possible if we're going to be engaging in either close to mid-range gunfights because in multiplayer it's very fast paced so we want to be able to aim down sites as fast as we possibly can and also that aiming stability does actually help with recoil control all right so for the stock we're going to be running with the no stock attachment now i know it seems very counterintuitive to use a no stock attachment because it's going to increase that recoil however i do have some options to help you control that recoil but this is going to give us that movement speed and aim down side speed if you don't have this on your lmg is going to be super slow sluggish and you're going to lose a lot of gunfights because you can't move around the map as fast or aim down sights as fast now for the perk i personally feel feel like sleight of hand is a must have especially in multiplayer it's going to decrease the time it takes to reload your weapon so this is going to be an option for you if you don't want to use that perk sleight of hand you can take this off and you want a little bit more recoil control you can actually put on either the merc foregrip or the ranger foregrip the recoil pattern is entirely vertical we only want attachments that's going to control that vertical recoil so the merc foregrip and the ranger foregrip are going to help out with that now there is the operator foregrip but it does greatly decrease that aim down side speed and that's not exactly what we're looking for now the ranger foregrip does decrease the aim down sight speed and aim walking movement speed however the penalties are not as bad as the operator foregrip now also the other thing about the ranger foregrip is that it has that aiming stability which is also going to help out with your shot aiming stability is when your aiming
moving down sides and your weapon is swaying left and right. Now with the Ranger foregrip, you're not really going to notice that because of that aiming stability pro that it has. The Merc foregrip does increase your movement speed. It's a hidden stat that the game doesn't tell you. So that's why it's very important to take a look at that website, truegamedata.com and take a look at all the attachments and you might find some surprising stats about some weapons that you didn't know existed. So you could go with either or if I was going to choose between the two because I'm a more aggressive player, I'll go with the Merc foregrip so I can move around the map a lot faster and you're still going to get the same amount of vertical recoil control. Now let's go ahead and take a look at my Warzone setup here. So for Warzone, it's going to be a little different. Warzone, I don't really care about aim down sight speed or movement speed. It's an LMG. This is meant for long range engagements. So for the muzzle, I'm going to be using that monolithic suppressor. Barrel is going to still be the long shot adverse and the optic is going to be the VLK 3.0 optic. This is going to give us actual recoil control. Again, it's a hidden stat that it does control that recoil. Even if the game doesn't tell you, take a look, truegamedata.com. It'll show you the proof right there. And also using this scope is really nice. It's easy to see your opponents and it gives you a much clearer picture, which will result in a much cleaner shot. So for the perk, this one's optional. Again, you never know when you're going to need to reload, but however, I'm most likely going to be running with an SMG anyway. So if people start to rush me, I'm probably going to switch out to my SMG. But if you want to have a faster reload, you could put on the perk slide of hand. You can add the tack laser if you don't want to add the perk. I think this is the choice that most people are going to roll with because most most people run overkill anyway, so they'll switch to their SMG. So for the underbarrel, we're going to be running with the Ranger foregrip. This is definitely going to be my go-to weapon in Warzone for long range engagements. This is definitely a better weapon than the Bruin. So I hope you guys did learn something today. Make sure to leave a like on it if you did and subscribe if you are new around here for more Call of Duty content and turn on notifications so you never miss a future video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.